hey everyone welcome back to my channel so today i am back with another video and this time we are doing a full set of acrylic nails so the first thing i'm doing is i'm going in with my cuticle pusher which is the tammy taylor peel and stick cuticle pusher and we are just pushing back those cuticles yes her cuticles are a little bit rough and i'm gonna go back and fix that at the end i'm also getting a cotton ball to remove some of that nail polish that she had on her fingers so now i'm going in with a 180 sanding band you want to make sure that you don't use anything too coarse because it will damage their nails when we're doing this like i said we are just focusing on taking away that shiny layer because if not we will get lifting you want to make sure that you look at your nail from different angles if you see any more shiny spots go back and file that part because like i said that will cause lifting And remember that when we're doing this, we don't want to make the nail thinner. We're just filing to remove that shiny layer. Basically, our nail produces oils. Oil and water don't mix together. So if you were to put a set of acrylic nails on top of just her regular nails without prepping them at first, they will eventually live maybe like the day after. So that's why we want to go in and prep the nail really good and get rid of that shiny layer. So after this, I'm going to go in and just trim and file the nails. Okay, and I'm using a straight edge nail clipper and I'll leave the link in the description. I get mine from my local nail supply store, but I will leave the link to the one I found on eBay. Now I'm going in with a pair of nippers to remove some of her dead skin around her cuticle area. And if you are a beginner, you have to be really, really, really careful with this part because it is really easy to cut. But as you can see, I'm just cutting away that dead skin that's hanging off. Okay, so now I'm going to be applying my nail tips and remember when you're doing this if one tip is too small and the other one's too big you always want to go with the bigger one and then just file it down on the sides and then as you can see here the nail tip was a little bit too big to where it was touching the skin that's why I didn't want to stay down so I had to go back and file it down a little bit so like I said even if it's too big it's not going to stay and if it's too small it's not going to stay either it's going to come right up like those did so you want to make sure that it fits perfectly so remember when you're applying nail tips the smallest nail tip which is a number nine or ten those will be like your pinkies the biggest ones will be either a zero one a two or three those will be your thumbs and then all the other numbers in between will most likely be your ring finger your middle finger and your index finger so also you want to make sure that the nail tip fits from sidewalk to sidewalk you don't want it to be too small you don't want their natural nail hanging out because eventually that will just outgrow it and it will cause your nail to lift and also remember if the nail is too small it will even just lift or it's going to even crack right in the middle so make sure that you are sizing your nail tips properly
and also i've had a lot of people asking me about the nail tips they will be back on the website really really soon i'm working on it but i just been so busy that i haven't had time so please bear with me so after that we're going to go in and cut down the tips to the desired length and then we're going to go in and shape them she is going to get a coffin shape so as you guys know i always like to go in with my nail clipper the straight edge nail clipper and cut the sides down that way it saves us a lot of time also always be sure to go back and measure your tips to make sure that all the nails are the same length and then this is where we go in and cut the sides of the nails and this is only if they want coffin or stiletto we're cutting away some of that nail tip that we would be filing off so by us doing that we're saving a lot of time and then it's not going to be as hard once we start filing once again this is a straight edge nail clipper and i'll leave the link in the description Okay, and to shape the nails, we are using a 100-100 nail file. So remember, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you alternate from side to side and do like an even amount of files on each side. That way you don't have a crooked nail. And when you're filing the free edge, you want to make sure that you file at a 90 degrees angle so your nail tip would be nice and straight. And then also when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you just go ahead and blend the nail tip. That way it looks a little bit more natural after we apply the acrylic so once again when we're doing this we're filing on both sides as you can see I start from where the sidewall is and I file inwards towards the tip and then we blend a nail tip Okay, so after we're finished shaping the nails, we're going to just dust them off and we're going to go in with our OPI primer. So as you guys know, the reason why I use the OPI primer with the Mia Secret acrylic system is because I have a lot of the OPI primer and I found it to work really good with it I don't have any lifting at all but as you guys know it really doesn't matter what primer you use as long as you are prepping the nail correctly and filing the acrylic around the cuticle area really good okay so now once again I'm using my Mia Secret acrylic system and my acrylic is in the color pink which is a really pretty translucent pink almost clear and for my brush I'm using my alpha brush an oval shape and the number nine and it is a Kalinsky brush so as you can see I placed my bead right in the middle of the nail I brushed it down I placed another one right above that one and I'm brushing everything down towards the tip and when you see me moving the finger around that's because I'm looking around to see where I need to apply some more acrylic you do want to make sure that you have a really good apex which is right in the middle of the nail closer to the cuticle area that stress area or that apex is where your nail gets its strength so if your nail was to break that's where your nail gets its strength and if you don't have a stress area and your nail is about to break it will break really really easily because it doesn't have any strength at all so that's why you want that part to be a little bit thicker but once again i brush all my product down towards the nail tip or not brush it down but blend it down towards the tip you also want to make sure that you have a nice and thick nail tip so your nail tip will have to be like the thickness of a credit card and then the apex of your nail will have to be almost like cardboard thickness so you can kind of get an idea of how thick your nail should be so once again i place that first bead on the nail and then i place another one right below that one 
so we're making sure that we're building the apex also making sure that our nail tip is not too thin so that's why whenever we place that bead right in the middle when we're brushing it down we're just lightly feathering down that way our nail tip is not just super super thick we're feathering it down and that's what you want to make sure that you're doing a lot of the time when I'm helping people they tend to brush down too too hard to where they have a really thick nail tip and then a really thin apex so you want to make sure that you're not doing that so once again I place that bead right in the middle brush it down towards the tip and a lot of the time you don't have to stick to a certain method like I said just kind of go as you please because a lot of the time if you do one big bead of acrylic then you most likely are not going to have to go back and add a second third or fourth bead just that's why I said just look at your nail and if you need to add some more then that's fine if not then you can just move on so usually I try to stick with the four bar method. So this will be my first one, which goes right in the center of the nail and we feather it down towards the tip. I do another one right where that one was either below or a little bit above. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, just look at your nail and see where you need it brushing it down towards the tip and as you can see I always push my acrylic back up that way it doesn't take away our shape the next one I place it right closer to the cuticle area and remember to always clean around your cuticle area really really good even if it's not flooding your cuticle area you still want to go back and clean around there just to make sure that you have a really nice and neat cuticle area after this we're going to apply another bead this is what's going to cause or make our stress area a little bit thicker and then if you need to add some more then that's fine like I said look at your nail from the sides from the tip just everywhere to make sure that even if you have any bumps or lumps you could always go back and just add acrylic where you need it
Alrighty, so now after we finish applying our acrylic, we always, always, always go back and reshape the nails. I know not too long ago, I was um, giving a girl constructive criticism on her work and she was saying that after she applied the acrylic, the acrylic kind of messes up her shape and this is why you have to go back and reshape the nails. So I don't know if she skipped that part or what, but you always have to go back and reshape the nails because like she said, it does take away from your shape. It might make it a little bit round. It might make the sides a little bit wider, whatever the case may be. You have to go back and redefine your shape so you have that perfect shape that you want. So Okay, so now I'm going in with my fine drill bed and we are filing the acrylic. We are trying to make sure that we seal around that cuticle area really, really good to prevent lifting. So as you guys know, I never really have any bumps or lumps. So I always make sure I focus around that cuticle area so our acrylic is nice and sealed. So this is my normal speed or my actual speed. So I start from one side of the nail or the cuticle area and I work my way around the other side and I do this until I'm able to see where the cuticle area is where the natural nail is and where the acrylic is and as you can see there you can actually see her natural nail right in between that cuticle and the acrylic so that's how you know you filed enough and you don't want to file hard when you're doing this because it will cause friction and it will cause the nail to burn so make sure that you keep your nail drill moving at all times and then like i said whenever you file the rest of the nail as you can see i'm filing with the belly of the drill bit or like the middle that i just call it the belly but it's like the middle of the nail drill bit and then the cuticle area i file with the tip of it as you can see there so once again we're going to do this to all the nails and this is really really important because if you do leave any little gaps in between the acrylic and the natural nail water will get under there and then that's when you get the green spots on your nail so make sure that you seal that acrylic really really good to prevent that lifting Alrighty, so after that we're gonna go in and buff the nails to make sure that we get rid of any scratches left from our e-file and also when you're doing this you want to make sure you feel on the nail to make sure that it's not bumpy or lumpy at all and if it is then just go back and buff some more if not even file to get rid of the little bumps or lumps and after this we're just going to dust the nails off and we're gonna wipe them off and that's gonna be it so as you guys know it's always the same process the acrylic process is always the same that 
that's why I don't always include it in my videos because it's really the same. You just have to keep practicing and practicing to perfect your craft. But after we've done cleaning the nails, then her nails will be ready for the polish application. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNail32. And I'll see you guys next time.